Please welcome Tony Hay. Thanks. It's great to be here. Uh, but I'm a scientist, and I feel slightly out of context in this audience. But I'll tell you what we're doing um, in the collaborations with the universities and um, what I think the open source community could do to help the scientists. So this is just by way of introduction. I used to be a serious academic uh, before I joined Microsoft. Um, I'd just like to pick out a couple of things on here. One is the thing at the bottom, MPI. I, I, with Jack Dongara and a couple of others, I wrote the first draft of MPI. I paid for the beer at a birds of a feather session at supercomputing. And one of the key things that made the message passing interface a success was the fact that Rusty Lusk and Bill Grapp at Argon wrote an open source version of MPI as the standard was being developed. And that was critical and critical to the adoption of MPI. And when I came to Microsoft, I was very pleased to find that the open source version of MPI that we developed is actually included in Microsoft's cluster. So that was a nice surprise. The other thing I'd like to say is I was a head of a computer science department, and I was also on various funding agencies. And we funded lots of projects in the UK, uh, open source projects. And uh, one of the things that when I was running the, the UK e-science program, you would translate that in American as cyber infrastructure, uh, was that it was making sure that the, the software survived the end of the project. When the project killed, you know, people dissipated, and the software, actually the open source software, just stopped working. So I set up a thing called the Open Middleware Infrastructure Institute, which was to do all the sort of things that academics don't like doing, like specifications, documentation, and testing. And so uh, I did have a lot of experience in trying to make open source work, and I did, in the end, come to the conclusion that you needed a mix of, of, of software. So why is science particularly interesting at the moment? Well, we're in the midst of a revolution. I mean, we know all about experimental science, the, the, the Greeks and the Egyptians looking at the stars, experimental science, and then we had theoretical science with Newton's laws. In the last few decades, it's obvious that computational science is a separate methodology for doing science. You need to know about parallel algorithms, you need to know about numerical methods, and so on. But today, scientists are being flooded by all sorts of data from satellite surveys, sensor networks, supercomputers, and so on. Huge amounts of data, and they're really drowning and need tools to manage. So I believe there's a great opportunity for IT companies like Microsoft, IBM, and others, and the open source community and the computer science to actually help the scientists solve some of the problems that we care about. So science has to move from going from data to information to knowledge. This is uh, my organization. Uh, we have a number of themes, which I won't go into here. Um, but we are working with scientists, trying to help scientists solve problems in energy and the environment, and also uh, in health and well-being. So we have projects. I will show you one dealing with HIV. So what I'm going to tell you about is what my small development team, the Advanced Research Tools and Services Group, do. And they don't do it alone. They do it in collaboration with the community of scientists we find out what tools they want. Um, it may surprise you that many scientists, biologists, chemists, environmental scientists, and so on, actually like using Microsoft tools like Word and Excel. So can we make them more useful for scientists? So the goal is, quite simply, to support the scientific process better than we have done before. And the option we're trying to do is to give people choice. So they can use, if they want a Microsoft tool, they can use an open source tool, they can interoperate with uh, Google or uh, uh, IBM or Oracle, whoever, and they have a, a choice. And they'll only use the tools that are the best for their job, and that's what we're trying to do, to provide them with tools that help them do their science better. And in my time as a, uh, running at the, the Research Council programs in the UK, I saw many generations of scientists sacrifice the grad student became the, the system support person for the research group. Now, that's a fine job, but that wasn't what they started off doing. They wanted to do the science, but they ended up being system support. So the strategy we have, then, is to build tools and technologies for the scientific community. So I realize that's slightly different than the community here, 
But let me tell you what we're, we're trying to do. So we're trying to do open source extensions to various platforms that we have in Microsoft that are used by the scientific community to make them more useful. And I'll, I'll talk, uh, I'll go around this circle and talk briefly about these tools. And we're releasing them as open source. So the first one I'd like to mention is uh, called Project Trident. It's uh, about a workflow system. And uh, what it's intended to do is to uh, make the scientists take the data streaming in from sensor networks, do all the steps that you have to do to, to, to curate it, to clean it, to, to put it into a form that the scientists can use. And these workflows uh, enable people to, to do what they used to take weeks to do in a few hours. So in particular, the project we're working with is putting a sensor network uh, on the ocean bed outside the Pacific Northwest, which is a highly uh, active earthquake zone, and you'll have the sensor networks looking at the activity on the ocean floor. And the data will stream in, and it'll be using this workflow in Project Trident. And you can see more details of that on our stand. And I thought you'd like this one. You'll notice my slides have a little plug at the bottom, which says this is a Creative Commons. You can use this slide, and you can have it uh, as long as you do attribution. So we've created a plug-in for, for PowerPoint and for uh, all of Office, Word and Excel, that you can actually share these slides with the Creative Commons license. So uh, that's one of the plugins. You'll see other plugins we have for things like chemical equations and so on, you can see in the booth. So uh, a Creative Commons plugin is, I think, welcomed by the academic community. This is uh, a project based on SQL Server. And here, what we're trying to do is provide you with uh, a mechanism for capturing the context and the semantic information that Tony Hay gave this talk at OSCON. The conference was organized by O'Reilly. You have extra semantic information besides the presentation. So you can store semantic data in this. And what we're trying to do is implement emerging standards that are coming from the various communities. You may not have heard of things like uh, OAI, ORE, and SWORD are, are standards for repositories for academic papers. And so we're trying to make it easier for academics to use these standards and help the academics standards become accepted in the community. This is a visualization tool for Excel, uh, just to show that we have plugins for most of the Microsoft platforms. And this is actually a way of, of, of showing, doing network analysis uh, of all sorts. And this is just one of the visualizations that you can get. And this, on the right, you'll see a picture uh, of the British Library. That's what libraries used to look like. They will, of course, be very different in the future. And um, this is working with the British Library and the community in the, uh, Europe and, and the US to try and enable collaboration easily. So it's, it's combining, if you like, a document repository with Web 2.0 technologies and putting it in a framework that's relevant to the scientists and populating it. And so this is a project that's being led by the British Library, and we're working with them on that. And again, you can see a demo of that outside. OK, so uh, those are actually enhancing our products and taking the, the requirements that the researchers tell us that they want and trying to make it more useful. The code will be open source, and you can do what you like with it. It'll be a permissive license. Um, this is a, a, a research tool. This, this is uh, from our machine learning researcher, David Heckerman. And uh, he's applying his machine learning technology to HIV AIDS, and he's working with uh, uh, HIV AIDS researchers around the world. And this, in particular, is one at uh, Mass General in, 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 in Massachusetts, uh, working, looking at the genetic pools and studying the correlations of, of the, how the HIV virus mutates within different genetic pools. And we feel, found this is actually very useful and, and leads you to the hope that we will be able to produce a vaccine at some point for HIV AIDS. So it's dealt with the, uh, you know, small communities, but this is the sort of tool that they need. The jobs that they do at the moment, uh, 
vary in scale between 10 to 20 hours, but some of the jobs require 1,000 and so on. It uses lots and lots of compute power for doing this. And at the moment, we, what we have asked the community to do, they can send their data sets to David Heckerman, and he will run them. So what we've been trying to do now is remove David Heckerman and port that to the cloud. So we now have PhiloD as an Azure service on the Microsoft Azure platform. And what this does allows scientists just to upload their data, do the analysis, and, and get the results back without intervention from David. And then this uh, was announced on Tuesday. It's actually uh, a plug-in for Moodle. Uh, and it enables you to go to your Outlook, to your Exchange and Messenger services within the Moodle framework. And it's an open source learning environment that I'm sure you're most familiar with. But this is a way of enhancing the value to the people who use these Microsoft technologies by putting it actually in the Moodle uh, portal itself. So this, this is actually for this community. It's released under a GPL v2 license. And so. Uh, those are just some of the projects that we're dealing with. You'll see more of them on our stand. But the goal is to make it so scientists and educators can use whatever tools they want. They have the choice. And if you want to add and extend to the open source uh, plugin, you can do that. You have the code. And so where we're moving towards, uh, in the view of the researchers I talk to, it's a data-intensive world. We're going to be flooded with data, but we're going to have to actually analyze and mine that with the help of computers, and so you need semantic information. So uh, we've heard of social networks. These are all, if you like, data networks, data meshes, and what we need to do is, is help go from data to information to knowledge, and so you, you'll store along with the, the data, you'll have paper X is about star Y, these RDF type triples, and this will enable you uh, to actually go and find the information more efficiently uh, than you can at the moment and, and to enable to search and visualize all this data. Where will you store that data? Well, some of it will be stored up in the cloud, no doubt, various types of clouds, and some of it will be stored on your desktop. Scientists are actually very protective of their data. They don't like to give their data to public things. But so I think initially people will keep their own data on their own servers and desktops, but some, sometimes they'll keep a replica in the cloud and eventually they'll begin to trust the cloud when, when we have the security and the guarantees that they need. So at the moment, we see that the scientists will be doing their research to try and solve the problems using some of these cloud services for computation, for storage, for identity, maybe for visualization. But you'll also have some software on your desktop and some analysis programs, the usual client programs that you want on your desktop. And so this vision of the future with software on the client and services from the cloud is, I think, going to affect not only the business community, but also the scientific community. So thank you very much. You can find out more about our tools uh, on these sites, and you can download them to play, and you can also go and see them on the booth. Thanks very much.